video was brought to you today by A Class Kisses. Let the fun begin! Hello my beautiful bright stars! Today we are looking at Set Theory 1. But before we begin, if I were to tell you that whatever goal, whatever dream that you have that lies within you, you already have all that it takes to achieve it. Will you believe me? Whether or not you do, it is true. All that we need to achieve that dream that lies within us, we already have access to. What we do need is to commit to making that dream happen. You need to commit to what's your dream. Give yourself a chance today and decide, hey, I am going to make my dream a reality. No matter what, I am committing to me. Commit to yourself and be you. You have what it takes. Can you tell me what the following images have in common? Let's look at them. If you said that they are all shoes, that is correct. Even if you said they mean shoes, that's also correct. Let's look another group of images. If you said that they are all cars or vehicles, you are correct. Let's try another. school students or students. You are correct. Now that's just delicious. If you said that these represent desserts, that's correct. Now let's look at what defines a set. What is a set? Can you think of anything? Let's go through the characteristics of a set. Now, firstly, each item within a set is distinct. This means that every item is only repeated once. A set is a well-defined collection of items. It's represented by a capital letter. Each item is called an element Remember, elements of a set. Let's look at the set D. D is equal to the set of 3, 5, 7, and 9. Is 3 an element of D? Yes, it is. So therefore, we can see 3 is an element of D. Now that can be rewritten as 3 is an element of D. Let's look at another. Is 4 an element of D? No, it isn't. Therefore, we can see that 4 is not an element of D. That can be rewritten as 4 is not an element of D. Let's look at different types of sets. A finite set. A finite set is a set in which all the elements can be listed. Finite set is a set in which all the elements cannot be listed. And we have the null set. The null or empty set has no elements within it. It's usually represented by a zero with a slash or two curly brackets. It's game time, guys! Can you help me guess which of these sets? are finite, infinite, or empty? Let's try. The set of natural numbers. What are the members of the set of natural numbers? They are 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. Yeah. So therefore, can we list all the elements of the set of natural numbers? That's correct. 
The answer is no. So therefore, we see that the set of natural numbers How about this one? The set of pigs that can fly. Can you list the members belonging to this set? Okay, if you were stumped like I was, then this set has no elements, so it is called the empty set. How about this one? The set of factors of 12. Can you list all of the factors of 12? Let's try. The factors of 12 include 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. We were able to list all the factors. Therefore, we can see that the set of factors of 12 is a finite set. Number of elements of a set. D is equal to 3, 5, 7, and 9. How many elements are there in D? 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, we can see that D has 4 elements, or the number of elements in set D is equal to 4. That can be restated as N open brackets D close brackets is equal to 4. And this means number of elements in set D is equal. Set notation, guys. Let's continue. The universal set. In any particular problem, the universal set contains all the elements that can be considered in the question. Let's think of our own universe. According to the Oxford Dictionary, the universe is all existing matter and space considered as a whole. In other words, everything we know everything that exists or will exist. Let's take another look at the images we met at the beginning of the video. What name can we give to this group of items? The universal set that can cover all of these items can simply be shoes, or you might say footwear. How about this one? The universal set that can encompass all of these items can just be the set of cars or vehicles. And how about this one? The universal set that can include all of these items can simply be students, secondary school students, or you can just say young people. And last, but certainly not least, are delicious delectables. Can you give me a universal set that can encompass all of these elements? If you said desserts, or you can simply say food or snacks, that's correct. So therefore, do you see that the letter U or the letter E is usually used to represent the universal set? Is there anyone who you will never, ever, ever allow into your home? Let's look at what we call complement of a set. The complement of a set, which is usually denoted by an apostrophe above the letter of the set, is simply what is outside of the set. For example, if I have the universal set, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and x is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 6, then x complement will simply be 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9, because 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9 do not belong to x. 
Now we're going to look at set builder notation. Let's say B is equal to the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We can see B is equal to the set of natural numbers less than or equal to 5. In set builder notation, this can be written as, and we simply say that B is equal to the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 5 and x is an element of natural numbers. So you see that? Yeah? And the symbol, open curly brackets, x colon, close curly brackets, simply means the set of all x such that. Relationship between sets. Set A is equal to 7, 10, 15, and 23. Set B is equal to 7, 10, 15, and 23. Do you see that set A and set B both have the same exact elements within them? Then we can say that set A is equal to set B. Did you notice that the order of the elements does not matter? That's correct. The order does not matter. So therefore, A is equal to B. Now two sets are equal when all the elements are the same and has the same number of elements. Let's look at another example. Set M is equal to 12, 5, 90. Set N is equal to 4, 1, and 5. Do you see that set M and set N are not equal? They do not have the exact same elements. Let's look a bit closer. Do you see that set M has three elements within it? 1, 2, 3. Set N also has three elements within it. 1, 2, 3. So therefore, we can say M is equivalent to N. M is equivalent to N. Set W is equal to 78, 6, and 9. Set G is equal to 2 and 9. Do you see that set W and G are not equivalent or equal? They are therefore said to be not equal sets. Can you tell me what these two friends have in common? They're both wearing red shoes. They both have purple and orange in their outfits. And they both have brown eyes. So they have three things in common. Red shoes, purple and orange in their outfits, and brown eyes. set theory, we call that an intersection. Intersection means what's in common. If I tell you set A is equal to 1, 3, 5, and 7, and set B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9, then what's common between A and B? 1 and 3, that is correct. So therefore, we can say and Taylor decided to get married at recess over a biscuit. Chris announced that what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. What does he mean? We ask 
asked baby Alex and she said, all that belongs to Chris and all that belongs to Taylor now belongs to both of them. This is called a union in set theory. This means all the elements within each set. So if I have a set P which is equal to 10, 20, 30 and set Q which is equal to 5, 10 and 20, then the union of P and Q, meaning all the elements within P and Q, will be 5, 10, 20 and 30. So we say P, the union Q is equal to the set of 5, 10, 20 and 30. Notice that we did not repeat any of the elements they shared in common. And this is because every element within a set must only be repeated once. Beautiful guys, you did a fantastic job. Have you ever looked inside the Chinese dolls? Let's look inside and see what's in it. There we go. We found one small doll within all of those other dolls. Let's do some subsets. R is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. S is equal to the set of 2, 3, and 6. Do you see that all of S belongs in R? We have 2, 3, and we have 6. What we can see in set theory is that S is a subset of R. This means that all the elements within S are contained within the set R. And this is written, S is a subset of R. Let's look a bit closer again. This time, do you think that R is a subset of S? For R to be a subset of S, it means that all of the elements within R must belong to S. Is that true? No, that's correct. So therefore, we can say that R is not a subset of S. And this is written as R is not a subset of S. Let's take another look at the Chinese doll. How many dolls were inside of the big one? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dolls were inside of the big one. Let's look at the set X. Now X is the set of one, four, and five. How many subsets do you think lie within X? One, we have the set 4, we have the set 5, we have the set of 1 and 4, we have the set of 1 and 5, we have the set of 4 and 5, we also have the set of 1, 4 and 5, and we have the null or empty set. Now the set itself and the empty set are always subsets of each set. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah? Now, what if you didn't want to write out all these subsets to know how many subsets lie within a particular set? We use this formula. 2 raised to the power of n, where n is the number of elements within set. Let's take a look at set x again. So x is equal to 1, 4, and 5. How many elements are there in set x? We have 3. Therefore, we see 2 raised to the power of 3, which is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which gives you 8. Let's count how many subsets we listed previously. We listed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So therefore, we got the answer either way. The Venn diagram. The Venn diagram 
is a really cool way of representing that basic information diagram or an image. Now, when you're using a Venn diagram, if you draw two sets connecting, it means that they share something in common. They share elements in common. Now, another Venn diagram between two sets can be disjointed, meaning that the sets do not share anything in common, and they are called disjointed sets. Also, we can have where one set is completely within another. This means that all the elements in one set belong in another. Therefore, in this case, we can say B is a subset of A. Let's look at another topic. Statement 1. All doctors are kind. Statement 2. Ariana is a doctor. Now we are going to take both statements to be true. What I want you to help me do is decide whether the conclusion is true, false, or you're unable to tell. In this case, our conclusion is Ariana is kind. So the statement reads, statement 1, all doctors are kind. Statement 2, Ariana is a doctor. And the conclusion reads, Ariana is kind. So is our statement, is our conclusion true, false, or we're not sure? Let's do a diagram to show. Now, all the persons who are kind will lie within K. If statement one is true, it means that the set of doctors lies within K. Since statement two is also true, it means that Ariana lies within the set D. So Ariana is here. So therefore, is our conclusion true? Yes, it is. And we see that the conclusion is valid. Let's try another. Statement 1. All judges wear black. Statement 2. Karen does not wear black. The conclusion is, Karen is a judge. Let's use the diagram again. Now, if we let B represent all the persons who wear black, and we let J represent all judges. If statement one is true, it means that all judges must lie within the set of B, which is the people who wear black. Now, Karen does not wear black. So where does Karen go? She's on the outside of B. She does not belong within B. So can Karen be a judge? No. Thus, our conclusion is invalid. It's not true. It's false. Let's try another one. Statement one reads, all kids eat snacks. Statement two reads, Garrick eats snacks. Conclusion, Garrick is a kid. If we use the set S to represent everyone who eats snacks, then the set including kids who eat snacks will go within here. Therefore, where does Garrick go? Now, if Garrick eats snacks, he can be a kid within K, or he can eat snacks and not be a kid and just lie within the set S. So can we tell from the statements that Garrick is a kid? No, we're not sure. So therefore, we see that our conclusion is inconclusive. There you have it. What you just learned is what we call syllogism in math. Give yourself a pat on the back. You did a fantastic job. We have reached the summary. Let's conclude everything that we've learned thus far. A set is a well-defined collection of items and each item within the set is distinct. This symbol means is an element of and this one means it's not an element of. A set is said to be finite if all its elements can be listed. A set is infinite if all its elements cannot be listed. The null or empty set has no elements and is represented by two curly brackets or a 
zero with a slash through it. The number of elements within a set can be represented by the following symbol. In any particular problem, the universal set contains all possible elements. The complement of the set is the set containing all elements that do not belong to the particular set. Two sets are said to be equal if they have the exact same elements within both sets. That is, they are subsets of each other. Two sets are equivalent if they have the same number of elements. The intersection of two sets contains the elements in common between both sets. The union of two sets contains all the elements contained within both sets. Two sets are said to be disjointed if they have no elements in common. A set is a subset of another if all its elements are contained within that set. The null set is a subset of every set, and every set is a subset of itself. Congratulations! You did a good job. Remember, you were born to live a great life. Step into your greatness today. Whatever dream it is that you hold within your heart, know that it's possible. You've got what it takes. Believe in yourself. At A Class Theaters, we truly believe in the gift of sharing, and we're so confident that we love our videos that we're giving them away for free. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel, and check us out on Facebook at A Class Theaters. If you need to contact us, check the description box for our contact information. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!